Welcome back to the Crochet Chronicles with my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Summer Breeze Crochet Top. This is sized all the way from extra small to 5 extra large. There are three different sizes listed within today's pattern. This is a really, really simple pattern and I think that you're going to enjoy it. And let me break down the pattern and also show you something that is wrong. Maybe you can identify it already within this photo. So here we have the pattern and it's available in extra small all the way to 5 extra large. There are three different sizes listed. Anytime a decision is made in this pattern you will see that there's a color change. So you'll see four balls are required for this size, five or seven depending on the size you're making it for. So for example in this it says chain 148, 160, 172. I know what you're thinking. The designers are not making up their mind. Truth is this is telling you which size you're making. So you have to commit to the size and then choose the number that best meets the size. This particular uh, project is in multiples of 12. So it's 12 plus 4. That's your multiples if you want to change sizes to anything even in kids sizes you can do that. So what you have here is that in 148 there's 12 multiples of 12 and then the 160 with the next size up there's 13 multiples of 12 and then 172 there is 14 multiples of 12 and each one of them have plus 4 at the end to keep it in balance. This is a really quite an easy pattern. Let me show you exactly what you're looking at for this particular top. So in the top here what we have is two rectangular pieces with a little bit of sleeving added to the one side here and this is just going right up over top of her shoulder and then back down on the other side and it's fastened right down this way on both sides to provide room for the head to go through it. So these are both identical. Now I know they don't look identical and maybe you recognize that already that this particular sample has a little imperfection in it. So see how that everything is lining up on this side and it's not on this side. This is the way it should look on this side. So what's happened here is somebody's lost their way when they were doing this pattern and one of the uh, uh, rows got out of sequence and this happens you know at the speed of time to create these patterns. So what we're aiming for is to do two identical patterns uh, panels that look like this. We're gonna do the banding and then we're gonna come back and just do your sleeve work and attach. So what I've done is I've done my homework. I've done all my panels and today I'm gonna be teaching you how to do this repeat pattern. Let me show you my homemade diagram because I know you love them. So here's my homemade diagram. I told you it was in multiples 12 because I figured it out and then you add 4 at the end in order to keep it within balance. What you're going to notice is that when we go to start we start here and we chain ourselves across and then we go 6 chain from the hook and we double crochet. We chain 1, skip 1, double crochet. Chain 1, skip 1 and then double crochet the next 7 in a row. So the secret between these gapping spaces that you see that I have highlighted in yellow is the number 7. So it's going to be 7, 7 and as you run into the edge they'll get more narrow as these move over. Or move over. Once you get back up we're going to establish which side that we're growing on. So for example we're going to then put a gapping space here and do our 7 and then we're going to be off by 1 to create this line on its side here. There's, there's uh, 3 of them again and then 7 and then because we're moving in this direction we go a little bit further on this side. Once we continue up there's only one gap here. We go our 7 and then you'll see that we're going to be over slightly. So the repeat pattern on this one here is rows number 2 through 7. So you're going to repeat that a set number of times in order to get the distance that you need in order to have the, the width of your panel. So let's talk about that next. So from a distance we're going to be looking at this and do you see, I can't really see it in person but I can see it definitely on the monitor that you see that it's going down in the slants just like you see. Everything is matching up and that's what it looks like in the model. So what this is is one uh, rectangular panel that's going all the way up and what's gonna, what we're gonna do is then fold it in half and then this becomes the part of the sweater or sorry of the top. So we're just gonna fold it in half and then we're going to attach right in the middle section here. So we're gonna fold both of them just like you see. So it's really quite easy. Then what you're going to do, so once you create one, the other one is absolutely identical. I just turned it, you turn it in a way that it keeps the lines making it look awesome. Then what we're going to do is that you're going to make a band that uh, is a certain dimension and you're going to attach it to the base of your sweater just like at the bottom in order to make it go all the way around. Once we get this attached together then we're gonna concentrate then making the sleeves that you see up here and ultimately this is a really amazing looking project. So without further ado I'm going to get you started on the actual making of a panel. You have to make two identical and then once you get that done just do your second one and then we're gonna come back and do the band and then we're gonna start doing the rest of it. So let's do that now. 
So let's get started. Create an extra long tail and you're gonna use that later down the road. So just make sure it's extra long more than you normally would and you're gonna use that to sew with later. Just leave it there. It's just easier to have it done now. So you're going to create a slip knot. So if you're doing the small to medium it's 148. If you're doing the large to extra large it's 160. And if you're doing the two to five extra large it is 172 stitches. But for my sake what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do a little panel with you to show you how it is on that diagram. So no matter what size you're doing there you can match that panel exactly because it's in the correct multiples. So just to crochet the size that you want for myself I'm gonna do multiples of 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's one multiple. Let's do another one. So 1, 2, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then once you get to the end you just add four. So the multiples that I gave you to start in the chain counts those are correct with the multiples already worked in. So let's work our way across the row number one which is the same for all of our sizes. Let's continue. So we're gonna go six chain from the hook and we're gonna create those gapping spaces right off the bat. So just right back from the hook itself. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And get the back hump of that six one away and I want you to double crochet. Then I want you to chain one and skip the next chain and double crochet in the one after that. Then chain one skip one and double crochet after that. So here's the secret. All of these boxes are made up in groups of three. So you see one, two, and three. So this one plus six more gives you the seven double crochets that you need that separate those boxes from each other. So let's just count the first one. So one and two, three, four, and five, six and seven. And once you have your seventh in you're going to create another grouping of three of these boxes. So chain one to start, skip the next one, double crochet in the one after that. Chain one, skip the next one, double crochet after that. Okay, so chain one, skip one and double crochet after that. And you're gonna keep on going down your chain and doing that same configuration. So you'll do uh, including this one you'll have your seven double crochets that separate them and then you'll be back to these three boxes again that you have to create. Once you get to the edge as long as your counts are right the final seven in a row will each be one double crochet. That includes that last one we just did. So we technically have two here and three, four, five, six and look at that. I'm ending on the right stitch. So seven in a row completes row number one. So if you if you're doing it right the very first we had our three boxes that you see. You have your sevens, you'll have your threes, then you'll have sevens and threes and sevens and threes and if your counts right the last seven will each be a double crochet. Let's move on to row number two which is our repeat pattern. Rows number two through seven is the repeat for throughout the duration of this project. So turning our work let's go for row number two. So you'll come back to this part of the video if you need it in the future. So what we're going to do is that we're going to establish ourselves to create a first gap space. To do that like one of the boxes by itself we're gonna chain four. So one, two, three that is your double crochet. Your fourth is your chain one space. You skip the next one and go to the second one over and double crochet. And there's your one box that sits by itself right on the very edge. Now that one plus six more of its buddies are each going to be a double crochet. So this is establishing the angle of what those boxes will appear. And once you have your seven but your look. So we technically have five done now. So you can see that we have to go into this chain one space. So there's number six and then go into the top of the next double crochet there's seven. 
So you can see that we just covered in what would have been a box if you would have left it there. Now we're gonna start our three boxes. So chain one, skip one, which is the chain one space. You're gonna go right into the double crochet. Then chain one, skip one, and that you happen to be in the next double crochet. And then finally, you chain one, you skip one, and go to the second one over, and this is just establishing now which sides the boxes are starting to move on. So they're moving on this angle that you see. So this one plus six more gives you a total of seven of double crochets in a row. You don't hear me counting because I technically don't need to count if you are just continuing to follow the same idea going across. So we know that when we go across you'll have five and you're gonna have to fill in the first box with the double crochet and then just fill in the frame of that box okay which is the next double crochet and then you start doing that. And you're gonna do that all the way across and then eventually you'll hit the end like it is here. So we chain one at the very end. You're gonna go into the next double crochet. So you're skipping over that chain one space. Chain one and you're going to go in skip one chain and go to the second one over to keep that looking flat. And that was row number two. So let's turn our work and do row number three. So whenever we turn our work, do you see how the angle is going up like this? Well when you turn your work, the angle is in the other direction. So just be very conscious of that. I think the mistake that you see in the photograph is that maybe the person wasn't thinking about what side the boxes were on because you know it got distracted. So we're now gonna look at it and we can see that it's going up on an angle. So we know that there should only be one box left if you continue that angling. So chain up four which is your double crochet chain one and go right into the first double crochet. So you're skipping the chain one space and there you've just satisfied having one box by itself. So you have three, two, one. So coming into the next chain one space just like that and then coming into the next double crochet and we technically have three in a row. You again are looking for seven but here's what I'm gonna tell you. You can not have to count yourself if you can see where you need to start the next box. And the next box is about to start. So these are the three just prior to these three. Okay, three double crochets. So you're gonna fill in the first one, chain one, skip the next one, and then double crochet in the next double crochet. And there is your first box, chain one. You're gonna come into the next double crochet, and then chain one, and then come into the next double crochet. And there is your three boxes continuing up on the angle. Then what you're going to do is just fill in this box. So go right into the space, put in a double crochet and then keep doing till you get your seven in a row done. Keep an eye on the boxes. So as you're moving across the boxes will each start appearing and you can look at where you need to go. When you get to the very end which I'm about to, you're going to notice that we have one box by itself. So that means that when we get to this side there should be two boxes this time. So this is the second one before the this one. So chain one, skip that second one, double crochet in the final double crochet, chain one and then skip the first chain and go to the second and double crochet in and there is your two boxes for row number three. Turning your work, going to row number four. So now the angle is in the other direction because you keep turning. Do you see that? So now we're gonna just comply with that. So we see that we got two, sorry we've got one and two so this time it should be three. So chain up four and double crochet in the first double crochet because you're skipping that space. Chain one, skip the next space and double crochet into the next double crochet. And because we need to keep on growing until we get our three across, chain one, skip one and double crochet into the next one after that. And you can see that you just now have your three empty boxes in a row. So this one plus six more gives you a total of seven. So you're just gonna keep looking to where what you can do in order to get your seven. So when you're going in this direction you just look at what boxes need to be filled in in order to keep that angle going. So you're gonna have to fill in the first box and with its double crochet partner. So you filled that in and now we still have to create three in a row. So we chain one, 
going to the next double crochet, chain one, fill in the next double crochet and because we wanna continue one more time, skip the next double crochet and go to the second one over for that and you can see that it just went up on an angle. And then we just continue to double crochet ourselves to the edge. You will notice that there's a box that's sitting by itself on the very edge here on this row. Okay, so you're gonna fill in the space and then you're going to go into the chain work itself for the final double crochet as you work across. And I gotta just untangle this for a second. So finish this off and just double crochet and then turn your work and let's move up to the next row. So that was number four. So now let's go for number five. So the, the angle is coming towards us. If we see it, we're coming towards our hook. So we're gonna keep maintaining that. So there's nothing to fill in here because we're still working on an angle. So you're just gonna chain three this time because there's nothing to fill in. And you keep double crocheting until you get close to where you see the first sets of boxes. Just like that. Then chain one, skip the next one and double crochet in the next one after that. Okay, so now you just technically move the box forward, chain one, go into the next double crochet with the double crochet, chain one, go into the next double crochet and we've just satisfied to get our three boxes in a row. Now what we want to do is fill in the next box, go right into the space and keep on going till you get your seven in a row and you're gonna keep doing that all the way across just like you uh, showed you. So I'm looking for when the next empty boxes start appearing again, which is right here. And I'm looking towards the second one that's right before it to make sure I skip it. So chain one, skip one, double crochet into the one just before the empty boxes. Chain one, go into the next double crochet. Okay, chain one and go into the next double crochet. And therefore you have your three boxes but look you have more to finish on the end of this. So you're gonna go right into the space and then you're gonna go right into the actual chain work to finish off. You can see that you've just continued to move forward on an angle. It's turning our work and let's continue up. So this time what we have is that we can see that the angle is now moving in this direction. So it's going up this way. And we wanna be conscientious of that. So we're gonna chain up three. It's your first double crochet. And now we're gonna fill in the spaces. So we're gonna fill in the first double crochets and we know that the angle is going in the uh, direction away from me. So I'm gonna fill in the first box plus its frame and then I'm gonna start my new boxes. So chain one, go into the next double crochet, chain one, next double crochet and then chain one skip one double crochet, second one over and now the boxes have moved over. Just like you see there and then we're gonna continue. So that's considered one of the seven. So this is two, three, four, five and six. So I'm filling in the first box and its frame. So that's seven. So continuing along chain one Go to the next double crochet, chain one, go into the next double crochet, chain one and finally skip one and go to the second double crochet over to move it over and then you're gonna finish off with the final that you have here, okay? So we have three in a row that's at the end in order to finish off this row which is number six. So now we're gonna turn and work and do number seven which is the final of the repeat pattern before you have to just go back to number two because number two is exactly where you're gonna be after you finish number seven. So let's look at our work. So we have three boxes and it's gonna shift over one so therefore we're gonna have a gap right in the end. So chain four and then come to the second double crochet to move that, to make that gap space happen. Chain one double crochet in the next double crochet to keep that gap open and chain one and double crochet in the next double crochet to keep it open and you got your three boxes in a row so then you're gonna fill in the space. So you're gonna have seven in a row. 
So just be conscientious as you're moving across any of these stitches on which side those boxes appear because you don't need to count if you can see what you're doing. And I would glance once in a while just down your panels to make sure that you are getting the right side of the box. So we know that the boxes are coming towards my needle. So they're coming up or towards my hook. So I wanna make sure I'm just paying attention to that. So overall once I got used to the pattern, once I got onto round, uh, row number three, I found myself very confident I'm um, just being able to follow these up. So we're gonna do this for a set number of times. This is the last of your repeats that you're gonna have and then you're going to restart all over then for your second one. But how far do you go? We'll talk about that next because once you get to a set dimension then you're just gonna do two rows of single crochet before fastening off. Okay, so this is row number seven. So the row number seven kind of looks very similar to row number one, but row no number one it never counts because it's part of your chain work. So number two is your next one above and then you keep on doing it. So what we're going to do is then you need to take a measurement in order to get the right size. So let's talk about that next. So here's the sample I was just working on. So you wanna continue to repeat the pattern all the way down and because you're wearing it like this, you wanna set dimension. So for the small to medium size, it's nine and a half inches, which is what you see here on camera. And then the, uh, the extra large uh, size is 11 and a half inches and then the two to five extra large, it's 15 and a half inches in order to get the width that you need. So you're just gonna continue to repeat the pattern. What I strongly recommend is that when you do the second one, just use the first one as your template and so when you go to do your second one, you want to make sure that it's gonna be matching. Just count the number of boxes up on an angle, that's how I did it, and just to make sure that it's the right uh, amount of counting that you have when you do your second sample. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna fast forward in this tutorial and I'm gonna show you what you need to do because once you get to the size dimension that you need, you're going to finish off with two rows of single crochet and I'll show you that next. So once you get to the width that you need, the final two rows are single crochet. So it's written as two different instructions because you have to fill in your spaces that you have. So to do that, you're gonna chain up one and it's gonna be one single crochet in each one of the stitches and if it happens to be a chain one space, you're gonna fill those chain one spaces in very much like it was a double crochet if you were doing it before. So I'm gonna about to hit a double crochet space here, okay, or a chain space. Just fill it in with a single crochet and then keep on moving across just filling it in. So single crochet yourself all the way down your panels and uh, make sure that you do this at the end of each of the panel. Don't fasten off your yarn. Uh, just keep on going and complete these two rows. So this is row number one of two. So just single crochet. Make sure you fill in all those spaces right to the end and don't forget those chain one spaces that you have when you have empty boxes and then make sure that you finish off in the right section. Now you may not have empty boxes on this side of it, it just happens to be this, this, this sample. Once you get that far then, just turn it one more time and chain up one and do one single crochet all the way down and then once you have that done, I want you to fasten off. Leave an extra long yarn tail because you may use that to sew in your project at the end. So it's better to just leave on a couple feet just to make sure that it's gonna work out for you and if it's not, then just cut it off later. So just single crochet yourself all the way down, fasten off and we're gonna move on to making the band next. So we're now gonna work on our bands and each one of the bands is a set number for all of them. They're all chain nine and then the difference is, is that the small to medium is 40 inches, the next size up is 48 inches and then the next size after that is 64 inches. So the, obviously the bigger it is, the more that you have to make this band. So we're just gonna crochet along. We're going to go into the back loops of each one of these to give the ribbing effect and let me show you how to do that. And then once you're done with that, you can just either just join it with a slip stitch like I did or you can sew it and therefore you have a nice circle that you have and we're gonna be attaching this to the bottom of the top when we're ready. So let's show you how to do this one. So the band is a repeat pattern so you're just gonna start off with a slip knot to begin. I always leave an extra long tail especially with clothing that you can hide it in better and you're gonna chain a total of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. Second chain from the hook, get the back hump of the next stitch or of the next chain and just single crochet yourself across. So 
So if you went, if you chain nine and you went second chain from the hook, there's a total of only eight stitches that go across the band. And get right into the last one. So what I like to do is that I have to go into the back um, loop. So when you're looking at it from this position, if you're new to crochet, there's two strands. The first strand closest to you is the front loop and the furthest one is the back loop. So what I like to do is that before I, I physically turn my work, so I was crocheting along, you chain one first and I like to just dive into the first back loop. See, I just dive right into it and then I grab it and then I turn. Just as easier for me, I don't know why. So I'm just gonna single crochet myself in the back loop. This is what's creating the ribbing effects that you see within the project. And you're gonna go right to the end. So there's gonna be a total of eight stitches. And you just keep on going back and forth till you get to the inches that you need. So I'm at the end, so I'm chaining one and I just pick up and I dive right into the back one first. Then I turn it. I find it's just easier to see. And you just single crochet in the back loops going all the way back across. So what I want you to do is just go back and forth and then a fasten off and then attach your band so that you have a continuous uh, attached band and then we're gonna move along in the project and start doing some attaching in order to make it work. So just chain one, back loop, turn and keep on going. So please do that all the way for the amount of inches that you need for your band. So looking at the diagram, what we have here is that we have the direction of crocheting. So we started off and then we made our way this way and then this one is in the other direction. So when you actually have these laid out, the single crochet that you finish with should be directly down in the center of your top just like you have here. So what we're going to do then is that we need to measure out where our sleeves are and the sleeves are going to be a, a very strategic when we put things together. So you see it's either 16 and a half, uh, 17 and 3 quarters or 19 and it's showing you this is what that dimension is. So you're gonna have this on both sides of this. So I've just got this laid out. I haven't put it together in the middle yet but what I'm gonna do is just mark where my armholes are gonna be. So I'm now gonna put in my arm sleeves. So this is where you can actually compromise yourself a little bit if you wanna change out the dimensions. So it can either be 11, 12 or 13 inches up from the base like so but if you would like more arm space then you just don't go as high. So what I'm gonna just do is that whatever I do on one side I'm gonna do to the other. So I'm gonna say this is going to be, I'm just gonna say 10 inches. You know you can actually improvise this if you can figure out what to do. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through both of the sides of the panel. So this has been folded in half and it's at the top of the panel. And I am going to just put in a stitch marker and this will hold the two together. So I know this is where I am going to stop when I go to sew up the sides. So whatever you do to one side, you should do it to the other side. So let's just bring this over and we agreed that I just happened to do mine 10. But you can do your, or sorry, mine's 11 here. So I'm just gonna do the same to the other side. Now what you can see is that because these are equal, see how that I've secured it in the middle one of the grouping of three. So when I go to this side, I'm gonna just move to the middle one of the grouping of three on this side because they're both equal. And I'm just going to put in a stitch marker to hold those two into position. So now I'm gonna also now mark the center seam. So let's just peel these back first. So this will be the back of the panels that you see. So they're not equal in height. So what you wanna do is that you want to measure up a certain amount of inches. So keep it nice and even at the bottom here. And in this case, it's either gonna be 15, 16 or 17 inches up. In my case, I'm doing the smallest size. So I'm going to say it's 15 inches. So it's right there. And what I'm going to do is take my both panels right at that same spot. You can always adjust a little bit later before you start sewing. And I want to put a stitch marker there. So from that position all the way down to the base, I'm going to sew on the back. And we're just gonna attach this there. Now what we have is that the front panel is a smaller distance. You'd see there's six, seven or eight. I'm doing the smallest size. So I'm going to just measure up and in this case it'll be six inches from the base. So right there. 
and then just go across. Make sure that it stays even. And so now I've just marked my arm sleeves. I've marked my center point and what I'm going to do then is that I'm going to start sewing some stuff together in order to keep it nice and balanced at this point. So we're gonna do that next. So what I wanna do is that I wanna peel back the, t uh, the front section here so I can see just the back seam on the inside of this. Okay, so I can just only see the inside and I like to always seam up from right to left going across and I'm just double checking. So what I want to do is that I want to grab a strand that matches one of the colors or it's pretty close to it and I wanna do a whip stitch on the inside of the top. So just cut the strand and what I like to do is that I just start off with a slip knot on the one side I don't close it and I'm going to use a darning needle for the other side of the strand in order to go and whip stitch myself down there. Now whip stitching is just a fancy name. Once you see it done it's pretty easy. So what you wanna do is that you don't wanna go into both of the stitches that exist on a row. So you just wanna stay to the closest. So it'll be the front loop that you see on this one. Okay, so only one strand. So let me zoom in and show you that. So I'm only coming into the one strand on this side and then matching it to the other side to the strand that's on the inside of it. So don't go through both. This is called an invisible join. And you're gonna pull this through and when you get to that slip knot, I want you to insert the needle through slip knot. And what that will do is it will lock it into position and then you can take out that stretch marker so it's easier for you to see. And you're just gonna keep it all nice and organized and pull it tight and the slip knot will lock onto itself. So what you're going to do is just move it down so you just get the next strand, just one on the inside and then just the outside of this one. Do you see that? And I want you to go right up over top of this starting strand that you have. So it gets stuck into position and pull it tight. This is cotton so you can pull it tight. So move down to the next one. Now if you have to jib uh, jimmy it up a little bit, sometimes that um, you can be off by a stitch or two by the time you get all the way down. So just keep an eye on your on your edge on the other side down here to make sure that it's gonna stay nice and even. So just coming to the one side. And do that all the way down. So what I'll do is I'll meet you at the end of this line. So now at the very end and all I'm just gonna do is just weave it through and just tie uh, make it sure that it locks onto each other with a little mini knot that you'll never see. And then to really technically get rid of it, you just wanna stay on the inside of the yarn, or sorry, inside of the top and just weave it in and out three times. So one, just don't warp it in any way. So two, ironically and shockingly actually, I had the right stitch count all the way down so it's like amazing. <laughs> I had a magic ruler today folks. So I'm just gonna go in and out three times. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna turn this over and so we have this. So remember that we peeled the front back when we did it. So what I wanna do is I wanna flip this sweater or top, I keep calling it a sweater. I wanna flip it over backwards. So now the front is facing down. See, look at the nice seam that we just did. And now I'm gonna peel it back and now we're going to do the middle section. Now the, I left on extra long tails just so I had the same color. So what I want to do is that I wanna sew these two edges right to the, this one here, this is the front and I'm gonna use the same uh, yarn strand that I started off in the very beginning. So I showed you already how to do this. So just uh, fasten this together now and I'll see you at the end of that. So now turning it back over, this is what you would see if a woman was wearing it. You can see the beautiful seam line because we've done it from the back side. So what I want to do is that I wanna turn this inside out. So we've already got our sides marked already for where we need to go up from the base all the way to complete the sides and leave open the sides for the arms. So what I want to do is turn this inside out so that we can access the back or, or sorry the sides of the inside in order to do the side seams. 
So while doing that I just lost my one seam on the one side. So what I'm gonna do is just remeasure and then I'm going to sew up the side from the base all the way to here and leaving open the arms. And I'm gonna do that now. Use the same technique and then use this almost same color of yarn if you can. If you can just pull that from your ball in order to do that. Just for fun I've lost my one side here. So I'm folding it over equal to where I've measured up from the one side. I'm just double checking to make sure that these sleeves are gonna stay equal on the other side. So I can see I'm off slightly on the one side. So maybe it was a good thing I actually lost my stitch marker. And then I'm just going to refasten on to where it should be for this particular side. So I'm, only, I'm not going through everything. I'm only going through the one side. And we'll just tie a bow tie this time to make sure that it stays in a position. So now I'm going to sleeve it up. So I'm just going to, this is the inside of the top and now I'm just gonna start on the very base here and start whip stitching until I get to this mark and leaving this open for the sleeves. So I'm looking at the inside of the top so far. So I've just sewed my two sides together. I left it on the inside out. Now I have my band. If you haven't sewn it together just sew it together on the one side and just weave in your loose ends. Now keep this join on the side. Okay, so don't have it so it's interrupting. And if you like a certain side to show up as your first side, like if you want it white in the front or white in the back, it's up to you. Uh, you'll have different colors of course. So you're gonna notice that when it's leaving here, it's not as wide as the project and that's because this band has stretching ability. So just what I would do is that just get your, your pins, right? And just get your pin and just pin it to where you want it to go. And if you do that, then it'll kind of hold into position. So you're just gonna make sure that you just don't go through everything. And then just come to the one side and stretch. See I'm doing both sides just to make sure. So I'm just gonna stretch it. Go right into the outside edge and then back into the band. And then I wanna stretch the other side. This will help me to be able to keep it even as possible. And then what I wanna do is flip it up. Okay, so you see the back of the band here. So I wanna attach the back. And there you go. So what I wanna do is that I wanna follow the lines and now you're gonna stretch this as you go. So if you wanna put in some more pins to be able to find it, you can do that and then you're just gonna sew into this and because of the stretchability of the band, it'll pull it in nicely for you automatically. So what I would do is start on the edge that has the sewing on it and just work your way around and turn it over and do the other side and your bottom band is done. And again, just whip stitch it all the way around and stay and make sure that you're looking at the inside of the top at this point. So please do that and I'll see you at the end of that. So my bottom band is now attached and now I'm going to move it so that it's facing the right way as if you were wearing it. So some people may decide to opt out and not do any sleeving at all. It's not a very big sleeve. It's just more of a finishing uh, look when it's done. And you can see the bottom band looks great. I'm really quite happy with it so far. And I don't mind the color transition because it does go with the whole thing. So what we want to do is we wanna do the same thing with both sides of the sleeves. Because we have folded over, you can see all of the stitch work that's available to you. So let's review on how to do the sleeve. So let's begin to do the sleeve. So I'm looking at the right side as if you were going to wear it. So we're going to just grab some more yarn from the ball. And you can probably almost choose your colors um, from the ball if you wish, if you have that much left over. So what you're just gonna do is attach by the bottom of the armpit area and you wanna work it way in around. So this attach with a slip stitch, chain one, and you're gonna single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So when you hit those gapping spaces, remember that that is a, also a single crochet and you're just gonna keep on going. Now because I had you go into the back hump of the chain when you started, you have these perfect stitches that you'll see all the way around. So what I want you to do is that I want you to just pay attention to where the boxes are open so that you don't accidentally stick your stitches where they shouldn't be. So you're just gonna single crochet yourself all the way around for round number one 
and then I will see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming up around number one. I'm just attaching for the very first time getting all my single crochets established. So I'm gonna have you do rounds number two and three on your own and then that's it. You're just gonna fasten off, weave it in your ends and then I want you to move to the other uh, sleeve and complete it just as you see. So there's only three rounds if you want longer sleeves. Of course you can add more rounds but just keep an eye on your yarn ball to make sure that you do have enough yarn if you would like to go in that direction. It's nice to always have choice. So I'm just coming in the last one before I'm securing to the first one and I want to slip stitch it, chain one and then just start again single crochet around and I want to do this again for one more round after this so that you have a total of three rounds of single crochet. Please do that now. I'm gonna finish off this one on my own and then I'll do the other one and then I'll be right back with the finalization of, the, of this video. So it's actually pretty simple just generally just a little bit of work in order to assemble. So here is my final top. I got my sleeves. I made sure that the colors were the same on the sleeves just to have some balance to it. Of course you can uh, be more creative if you wish. Of course that the front down is, is more down than the others. If you'd like to do it up a little more just in case you don't want to be so <laughs> flashy you can do that. And uh, you can turn it over to the back and see the back side. I'm actually really proud of myself with the stitching I have to tell you. Um, it actually looks really good all the way down and the, the pattern does a great job on its own. So that's it for now. That's it. This is the Summer Breeze top. I'm going to try it on a mannequin next. See how it goes and then put it up in my studio and, and enjoy and display it for all to see. So we'll see you again real soon. It's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.